Good evening, everyone. Today is um, actually it's only a few days before Christmas. If you're going to be celebrating Christmas really soon, today is the uh, 21st. Actually, it's the solstice. My goodness, the winter solstice. So um, happy win winter solstice. Um, I don't know if you're celebrating that specifically, but I think it's an interesting day because at least here where I live, the days, today is the shortest day of the year, which means that um, the sun will come um, up really late and it will go down really early. So we'll have a really short day. Um, I know that if you're someplace else in the world, you may have an even shorter day. And we know that in parts of Northern Europe that people are celebrating um, the, the winter solstice because it's sort of the return to a longer day, but that's as the earth turns on its axis, we get to um, celebrate the, the coming of spring, if you will. So we've gotten into the, the darkest winter days, and now we're going to be coming out into the light. So that's super exciting. The other thing we're going to be talking about today is asthma, which is um, a, um, a breathing um, challenge for many people. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how webs, widespread it is and actually in the world. And then a few recommendations, things that I like to talk about when I um, talk about this with people um, who uh, may have family members who are um, struggling with asthma. And also we wanna make sure that breathing in general. So if you're having any sort of breathing difficulty, this is something that you wanna you want to really be um, mindful of. So we're gonna talk about some breathing exercises. We're also gonna talk about some of the recommendations over a long term if you were really challenged with this particular issue. So um, I'm gonna share my screen with you, but I also want you to keep in mind that today we have um, some, um, uh, some tips and tricks for you. I think you can, if you can see my screen, just give me, a, if someone could give me a thumbs up, you can see my screen. Yes. Okay. And let's get going. What's everybody doing today? Do we have new, some new people on that? If we have some new people on, want to hear who they are. Um, tell me in the chat if you're brand new today. I know it's right before Christmas. Everybody's super busy. There's a lot going on. I haven't heard from some of my friends. Hi, Olivia. How are you? Hi. Ah, today is winter solstice celebration. Okay, so people are celebrating winter solstice. Tell me how you're celebrating if you are celebrating. I'd love to find out. Um, we're not, we do have snow on the ground here, which is really amazing. We don't always get snow so early in the season, but we have quite a bit. We got about um, seven inches, which is about this much. Um, I can't, I don't know in, in uh, someone, uh, if anybody has a calculator, tell me what seven inches of snow is in the metric system. Okay, so let's talk about, let's jump in. Let's talk about what actually is asthma. So it's a chronic condition. It's an inflammatory lung disease involving recurrent breathing problems. Um, asthma is caused by the swelling and narrowing of the tubes that carry air to and from the lungs. It often starts in childhood, although it can develop in adults and affects people of all ages. There is currently no cure. So if you do know someone who is uh, struggling with that condition, please don't think that essential oils are going to magically make this condition go away. What uh, essential oils perhaps can do is assist them when they are struggling or perhaps, and we wanna make sure that we, and we're gonna talk about this quite a bit. If someone is actively having an asthma attack, you want to make sure that you are getting them to a doctor or to a hospital immediately. What the things we're talking about now is reducing inflammation in the body so that the body can begin to heal as much as it as is, is possible. Um, uh, many symptoms are under control. And I'm going to show you a picture in the next uh, slide that the, the uh, most common way that symptoms are controlled with this particular um, concern, but that patients can read full and rewarding lives with treatment and proper management. So who is affected? So more than 70 million people just in the United States, a third of these are children, and it is the most common chronic disease among children worldwide. More than 339 million people are living with asthma, and that, that statistic comes from the, um, the World Health Organization. Over 80% of asthma-related deaths occur in low and lower middle income countries. So I know I'm talking to many people that are in um, uh, developed nations that perhaps have worked hard 
to um, overcome asthma and to help people in different um, socioeconomic brackets to find treatment, to get assistance. But we wanna make sure that we're always mindful. I know here in the United States, I have run into people that have severe asthma symptoms and they were sometimes brought on by different things. I remember one time being at a conference and um, at one point the conference organizer asked us to stand up. It was clear that the, um, the carpet in the conference center was brand new because you could kind of smell that new carpet smell when we first came in. And we were asked to walk, I don't know, in a circle or to form groups or whatever. And very quickly thereafter, one of the women who was in my group actually was began to experience asthma symptoms. I, I think in that moment, it was the, the combination of maybe the the fibers from the carpet being stirred up by everybody sort of walking at the same time, but it was really very troubling. She did um, use an inhaler, like the picture that you're seeing now, and her symptoms did go away, but it was really very scary. And um, if you've ever seen someone with an asthma attack, it can be very, very scary. Asthma affects people of all races. So there is no discrimination. It is slightly more common among African-Americans in this country. And I don't know outside of the United States what's the, the most prevalent um, uh, uh, um, ethnic group, but in here in the United States, that's what we tend to see. So interestingly enough, asthma, as I said, doesn't discriminate, usually starts in childhood. There's a very long story, if you are an American, about Teddy, Rose Teddy Roosevelt, who suffered from asthma, one of our um, earlier presidents, and how he worked to strengthen his lungs and to strengthen himself really, and to overcome as much as he could his asthma. But it was something that was extremely troubling to him when he was a young person. So if you're interested in some history or someone in the in history who suffered from asthma, that's a, an interesting uh, person to, to pursue. So one of the things you wanna maintain obviously is to stay calm, whether you are experiencing the attack or you are a person who is witnessing the attack, you don't want to get, and I think this is true, right? During every emergency, really want to stay calm because staying calm is the thing that's going to help the person the most. Um, Dardanella is saying, yes, that's a Ventolin inhaler. Yes, it is Dardanella. Um, we're going to talk a little bit, and I'm sure you all know, if you know someone who suffers from asthma, let me know in the chat. I'd love to hear, um, are, is this something that you see on a regular basis? Do you know people who are troubled by this and have you, um, have you experienced it firsthand? So just let me know in the chat. So part of lessening an asthma attack is being able to stay calm, incorporating deep breathing exercises can not only strengthen the lungs, but also calms the spirit. So um, recently, there have been some studies that have shown that not during the attack, but in epi between episodes, actually doing deep breathing ex exercises can help with strengthening the lungs and also reducing inflammation in the body. So one of the things we're going to talk about when we talk about essential oils and um, uh, um, this particular condition, we want to make sure that we are not only strengthening the lungs, that we're taking steps between asthma attacks. And this is kind of the, the idea that Teddy Roosevelt took on, that he began to strengthen himself and reduce inflammation. So the fundamental causes of the disease are likely to be a, a combination of genetics. For example, if your parents suffered from it, um, it is common in uh, families and then external triggers. And that's what I was talking about before when I talked about the woman who um, was, uh, an attack was brought on by that carpet. So allergies to um, house dust mites, pollen, animal fur perhaps, uh, tobacco smoke, pollution, cold air, because we know that cold air is breathed in very quickly, can cause the lungs to contract. Um, chemical irritants in the workplace or the homes, things like paint, varnishes or adhesives, and other triggers can include extreme emotional duress or stress, exercise, and for some people, certain medicines. So there's no one cause, but we see certainly um, external triggers and genetic factors being part of the equation when we're talking about this. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about six breathing exercises when I did some um, uh, review of what works and what doesn't work. 
there were six breathing exercises that actually came up a couple of times. And I'm going to go through them quickly because if you do know someone, we might be able to, to help them. Um, and obviously these are exercises that they're going to do not when they're in the middle of a crisis. They're going to be doing these when they are basically at rest. So to strengthen themselves. Okay. So number one is diaphragmatic breathing. It's the, the diaphragm, if you're not aware of it, is the kind of dome shaped muscle below your lungs and it helps you breathe. So in diaphragmatic breathing, you learn how to breathe from the region around your diaphragm rather than from your chest. So you're kind of expanding your diaphragm, almost pushing it down and it allows you to strengthen your diaphragm, slow your breathing and decrease your body's oxygen needs. So that's a really kind of interesting thing. I didn't know that it did that, but um, you wanna practice your diaphragmatic breathing when you're at rest and when you're in a calm place, you can lie on your back with your knees bent and a pillow under your knees or sit up straight in a chair, like sort of like this woman is doing. It's not necessary for you to hold your hands in that position. You can place one hand flat on your upper chest and the other hand on your stomach. Breathe in slowly through your nose. Your hand on your stomach should move while the one on your chest remains still. Breathe out slowly through pursed lips. Keep practicing this technique until you're able to breathe in and out without your chest moving. Okay, so I know some of you have done this before. If you've done diaphragmatic breathing in any um, uh, setting, let me know. Has it worked for you? Has it calmed you down? I've used diaphragmatic breathing actually on planes if it's gotten a little bit too choppy. While I'm not getting on too many planes now, it really does help. It slows down, you really concentrate on your breath. And I feel like that's a, a, one, a wonderful thing. The other thing, the number two is nasal breathing. So I didn't know this, but nasal breathing has been linked to studies in more severe asthma symptoms. So we tend to think if I open my mouth and I'll kind of gulp in air, I'll be able to take in more air, but actually nasal breathing is needs to be practiced for you to maintain and control your um, symptoms um, during, an, during an episode and actually between. The advantages of breathing in through your nose is that it adds warmth and humidity to the air, which can help reduce asthma symptoms. The third one is something called the Papworth method. And I don't know a lot about the Papworth method, but it was mentioned several times. It combines several different types of breathing with relaxation training techniques. It teaches you how to breathe slowly and steadily from your diaphragm and through your nose. And you also learn to control stress so it doesn't affect your breathing. Research finds, and these are, this is one of the, uh, the, um, the studies that I saw um, on PubMed said that um, this technique helps ease breathing symptoms and improve quality of life in people with asthma. Um, there's another one called the butt uh, Budieko breathing, another one named after its creator, Konstantin Budieko, who's a Ukrainian doctor, um, developed the technique in the 1950s. Um, he also said that the idea behind it is people tend to hyperventilate. Well, you can't breathe, right? You want to, you're kind of gasping for air and to breathe faster and more than is necessary. So rapid breathing can increase symptoms like shortness of breath in people with asthma. So that idea of slowing down the breath is another um, technique that seems to work. Um, evaluating um, just uh, being able to breathe slower and deeper. Okay, pursed lip breathing. This is number five, um, a technique to relieve shortness of breath. To practice it, you first breathe in slowly through your nose with your mouth closed. Then you purse your lips as if you were about to whistle. And finally, you breathe out through your uh, pursed lips to the count of four. And this is something that I've seen actually in several um, meditative classes that I've taken. Yes, absolutely, I can. I can write down the six techniques. Um, uh, here we go, whoops. I can copy them over for all of our people who are in the chat. And the last one is yoga breathing. So this lady seems to be doing yoga breathing, if I'm not mistaken. She's sitting up um, on her sits bones and she's kind of relaxing herself. Her eyes are closed. Um, yoga breathing often combines movement with breathing. And several studies have found that using the same type of controlled deep breathing as in yoga may help improve asthma symptoms and lung function. So I wanna make sure that um, we're using whatever technique is gonna work for us, but also that we're pursuing Suing and encouraging the people around us that are um, maybe struggling to um, pursue other methods 
between asthma attacks. Okay, so let's, let's talk a little bit about what we can apply. So first of all, applying eucalyptus or breathe liberally to the chest, backs and bottoms of the feet morning and night, and you wanna dilute it for sensitive skin. Medicines like inhaled corticosteroids and beta agonists open up your airways to help you breathe easier and are usually necessary if the person is suffering from an immediate threat. Um, for some people with severe asthma, this might not be enough to control their symptoms. We're looking for something that can help them to develop their lungs and really become stronger over time. Um, uh, and it's interesting that for many years, doctors didn't recommend breathing exercises for asthma. They felt that breathing exercise might, might actually trigger the asthma, which is fascinating to me. But more and more studies are showing that yes, strengthening the lungs, strengthening the diaphragm, using breathing exercises, using um, developing techniques between asthma attacks can be really very effective. Um, if we wanna try something internally, we wanna make sure that we're taking our lifelong vitality. Of course, we're using our vitamins on a daily basis, vitamins and minerals, our supplements. That's going to reduce inflammation in the body in general. Um, I don't know the correlation between um, asthma and other um, um, risk factors. We talked about a lot about risk factors last week for Alzheimer's and dementia. Interestingly enough, many of the uh, risk factors that we see for other um, troubling illnesses can be risk factors for asthma. So, um, oh, I've got a couple of people actually talking about um, uh, different uh, experiences they've had with asthma. So making sure that the person is um, uh, not having any of those, certainly generic genetics, we cannot change, but can we keep them out of certain um, circumstances and then also make sure that any uh, physical risk factors that they may have are also lessened. So um, Pushpa's telling us that had a friend for, uh, made for a friend a vapor rub, once using a peppermint eucalyptus with beeswax and it approved it. Pushpa, tell us where they applied that um, the, the vapor rub, because I'd love to hear, but was it just chest and back or did they also apply to the feet? I'd love to hear. And then Grace says, my mom had asthma and putting a drop of breathe on the mask whenever she's out is effective to open airways. And this, Grace, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I'm sure that people who have asthma find it difficult to breathe with a mask or have to be really careful about what types of masks they are selecting. Now we know there are some people that are struggling now to wear a mask and to make sure um, that they, if they have to be in public situations that they have their mask on. But if you have something that constricts your breathing in any way or can trigger any sort of breathing problems, you really wanna make sure that your mask perhaps is made of materials that are natural and that won't trigger your or asthma, of course, because that would be extremely serious. Um, when they are not having an attack, you can uh, diffuse eucalyptus or breathe um, about 15 minutes a day to promote proper respiration. You can also apply the oils to the bottoms of the feet instead of diffusing. If you are experiencing an attack, obviously you want to seek immediate medical attention. Do not try to treat we are not doctors or most of us are not doctors. We wanna make sure that we are supporting our friends and family members in the times between and hopefully helping them to become stronger and maybe space out those um, attacks so that they're not as plagued by something um, so difficult. So what? It, let's talk about the success of essential oils for half a second. So the Cleveland Clinic Reachers, or Cleveland Clinic is saying that inflammation can be an underlying root of asthma and several other diseases, including arthritis, gout, high blood pressure, kidney failure, colitis, and myocarditis. Heart carditis, but, and that frankincense can play an important role in relieving inflammation. If you were on the, um, the convention uh, call this year, if you went to, um, oops, if you were at convention and you were able to listen to some of the speakers, many of them talked about inflammation and how important it was to reduce inflammation in the body. And that so many of the chronic illnesses that we see are caused by chronic inflammation. And so one of the things we wanna make sure is that um, 
we are reducing the inflammation on our body any way that we can. So we're taking our anti-inflammatories, things like our copaiba or our turmeric, very important. We're using our frankincense, which we're getting free this month with a 200 PV order. All of those things used regularly honestly can help us. The other thing we want to think about is managing stress. So asthma can be very scary, especially for children. Not knowing when an attack will strike can keep the asthma sufferer in a constant state of concern, even panic, um, worry from their family because they don't know what's going to be happening. Um, stress can bring an asthma attack on and increase it once it's started. So that's why we talk about not panicking. And then using things like lavender, balance, intune, and eucalyptus to reduce stress can also be very effective. So reducing stress in those in-between times and teaching that person, especially if they're a young person, how they can manage their asthma between attacks. Um, Rosiel Aquila, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, um, said uh, her husband had asthma, he will sneeze and then he will get the flu. Oh dear. So it's kind of a cascading effect. That's, I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm, uh, I am um, mindful of the fact that you may have uh, been exposed to people that have asthma who have very effective treatments and you wanna make sure that you're honoring their wishes. But I, if it was someone you, that you're intimately connected to, you might be open enough or they might be open enough to hearing what it is that you had to say. And then some of the, some of the suggestions I think here could be used intermittently. And not to mention the fact that they could be used to actually um, help the per person reduce inflammation in their entire body reducing their, um, their risk factors in, in other, uh, other areas. So let's talk about our cheat sheet and our 90 day plan. In month one, we're gonna use our frankincense, our lemon, and we're gonna be using our um, uh, LLV, of course. Lemon can be used in water taken daily. It can be a wonderful antioxidant and also um, reliever of uh, inflammation and reducing toxins generally in the body. So I'm taking my frankincense under my tongue, a drop under my tongue every day, and then drinking lemon in my water. If you're gonna be taking essential oils in water, many of you have heard me say this before, you wanna make sure that you're using something like glass or ceramic or metal. Don't use plastic because it can uh, uh, remove the toxins from the plastic and then they'll just be floating in your water and you'll be drinking them. So don't use plastic if you're going to be using essential oils. Definitely don't take essential oils and drop them into a water bottle. That's a recipe for disaster. You'll actually see kind of an oily residue floating in the bottle, and I don't want you to drink that. So just be mindful. In month two, again, we're going to repeat our LLV, and then we're going to be um, uh, uh, using our eucalyptus and our balance. Balance on our feet every morning. If you're not a balance user, start now because balance in the morning can be so grounding, wonderful way to start the day. Um, it also uh, has a little bit of fractionated coconut oil in there. So it can keep your feet feeling um, moist and tender. And then your, um, your eucalyptus, you're going to be diffusing on a regular basis or applying it uh, topically. Number three, we're going to repeat our eucalyptus. We're going to repeat our LLV, and then we're going to add in our breed. Now I would recommend if I would, a couple of other anti-inflammatories that I mentioned. Um, and we're actually going to be, um, one of them is going to be giving away, that's going to be our prize today, but we want to look at things like, um, as I mentioned before, your, uh, alpha CRS can actually work because it is a, a cellular vitality complex. It can work as an antioxidant. Also things like like um, turmeric, whether you're using the essential oil or you're taking the capsules. I personally prefer the capsules. You can also be taking your um, DDR, uh, DDR Prime. You could be taking your um, uh, deep blue capsules, which are a, a fabulous set of antioxidants. So just keep it in mind. There's a lot of things, products that we have available that you could add into this mix if you already had some of these products. Let's talk a little bit about allergies and asthma. Um, I'm itching my nose now. I don't know if it's because I just saw this lady who's about to sneeze. Um, adding the products for the 90 day plan um, into your regular routine use your cheat sheet and make suggestions. Also, we wanna make sure that we're taking things on a regular 
basis. Allergies and asthma are related and you may find relief sooner using um, both things. So look for look in the book because you know the, the ideas expressed here primarily from the book Essential Oils Healthcare for Today. Look at the asthma pages and then look also at the allergy pages. We talked about allergies a couple of days ago, a couple, sorry, a couple of weeks ago now. It feels like just a couple of days. But you want to make sure that you're looking at other pages so you can get support all around. Um, Jessica says actually that she has asthma. Um, and it's great to know that I have all the oils here that are mentioned. I'm going to try this. And frankincense really is the king of oil. That's absolutely true. Um, uh, just something the doctor recommended me is swimming. Wow, that's a great thing. I'm sure it is. Open up your lungs. And vapor rub is something I carry around every day. Um, I hope you're making some kind of natural vapor rub using essential oils. If you are, I'd love to hear about it. And Dar Danella says that she and her son have asthma. And for years, we used a Ventolin inhaler, but now we try to use it because, try not to use it because of the side effects. We use Breathe and Eucalyptus and um, the vapor, oh, the Breathe Vapor Rub. So you're using the stick. Is that what you're telling me? I want to hear if you're using the stick or you're making your own. I know it seems like some of you are making your own. Okay helpful resources. These are the two articles that I put in the beginning. I posted them in that right at the beginning of the chat. So the first one is kids with asthma play hard too. Um, uh, breathing exercises can relieve asthma, which is a, an article from the New York Times from I think several years ago, but both of them ex exceptional. So kids with asthma play hard in a shift in advice. Doctors tell patients to get as much exercise as their peers. So, um, oh, breathe vapor stick. Okay, fabulous. Thank you, Jessica. So take a look at these articles. The links are in, actually the names are already in the chat. I'm going to add in the breathing exercises in a minute as soon as I can get back and make a copy of that, of that particular um, text. Um, I want to say thank you to our Presidential Diamond team. These are everybody who gets on every week and brings people to this chat and, and um, promotes it and has uh, make sure that we're, we're getting the information that we need on a regular basis. As I mentioned before, this is the book that we're using to put together these presentations. And we're going to keep going through all of the 50 items. And also, just so you know, we're in the, uh, Carrie and I are in the process of updating all of the 90 day plans. So hopefully within this next year, I we're actively working on it now. I know we've been saying this for a while, but we're actively in the process of uh, updating all the plans. So you're gonna be seeing um, a whole bunch of new information really pretty soon. Okay, um, wanted to mention to you that um, we are, um, Go, not going to be here next week. So if you um, usually are with us here, we're going to be taking, I'm going to be taking a week off between Christmas and New Year. So I won't see you back here until on the, I think it's January 4th, which is really um, a, a bit of a break for me. I feel like I've been working just so crazy and it's nice to be able to take a break. So next week, the 28th, we are not going to be here and then we'll be back here on January 4th. And on January 4th, we're going to be talking about the month specials and a couple of other things, but make sure you're tuning in on the fourth. So super exciting. How many of you have gotten your frankincense special so far? I'd love to hear. Tell me in the chat if you've gotten your frankincense special. In the meantime, I want to make sure that I get you the information about the, the breathing exercises. I see a lot of you saying me. Trying to get the, oops. Well, a lot of you. Kamali is saying me, everybody's saying me. Okay. Wow. Okay. Grace, Yahweh, Lee Wen, Benjamin, Simon, Josie, Dihan, um, Amanda. Oh. Yahweh yeah, says she got three. Wow, that's really cool. Lydia Dardanella says not yet. Okay, Dardanella, you have a little bit of time. We got to get on that. Um, Lynette, uh, Vicky, Michelle, Weihui, uh, Yosli, Kamalia. Oh my gosh, so many people. Pushpa, Jessica says woohoo, everyone. Yes, almost everyone I think on the call has gotten it. Um, uh, Danielle, Cecilia, Sulin. All right. Um, if you haven't gotten your frankincense yet, make sure you get it. You want to make sure that you're getting this wonderful benefit. If you are 
was kind of on the fence and thinking, do I need another frankincense? I have to say frankincense is one of those things that at least for me, I go through them fairly quickly. So I want to make sure that I always have one, a spare one and getting a free one. So instead of maybe buying, I don't know, one a month, because I go through them fairly quickly, as I said to you, I always take a drop underneath my tongue. I um, I'd probably go through about a bottle a month. So instead of buying 12 bottles in a year, I'm buying 11, which is a little bit of a financial savings. Also later on, you can use your points if you want to, if you've been collecting your points, if you're on an um, LRP, you can make sure that you're getting your points and using frank your points perhaps for additional frankincenses later on. Okay, um, I'm gonna say, hold on one second, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say farewell to everyone who's on the live. Thank you so much. Uh, so if you're joining us from YouTube, um, join us again in two weeks. Click the button below to subscribe. Thank you for having been here and ring the bell so that you can get notifications each week. We'll be back again on the 4th of January. Have a wonderful holiday season. And for those of you who are on the live, I'm going to be picking my winner in the next uh, minute or so. So stay on and um, we'll see you real soon.